All right. Okay, everybody. So we're gonna uh, pick up where we left off. We're gonna do a short reading about the origins of pizza, a little reading comprehension exercise. Uh, it'll be actually a, sl a slightly easier reading level than this class, more of a, um, um, I guess I say a level four reading. It'll be good just to uh, ease in for the day. And then we'll, then we're gonna listen to a, a bit more of a complicated um, analysis by a, a doctor and his name is Dr. Parikh. And he uses pizza as an analogy. Um, who knows what an analogy is? This is level six, analogy. There's Dr. Parikh, but he uses pizza as an analogy for life. And that's where we get into a larger uh, discussion. So uh, an analogy is a comparison of two things and it can be broken down into many different things, you know, metaphors, parables, similes, all these things. But um, he talks about managing stress by thinking about life as a pizza. Sounds funny, but it actually starts to make a lot of sense when, once we look at it. And that's when we're going to dive into a deeper discussion. So when you think of, and when I mention analogy, that's a new word for today, think of a comparison, a comparison of two things. All right. So after we listen to the Dr. Parikh discussion, we're going to have a little breakout room discussion, and then we're going to do our first Google Classroom exercise. We're going to draw charts using a pie chart, but as a pizza, identifying which areas of our life bring us stress. <clears throat> and then I'll use that to uh, lead into a Google Classroom tutorial. I have not assigned anything in Google Classroom yet, but the exercise of attaching things correctly and looking at the schedule in Google Classroom is something that we'll wanna do throughout the semester. And just before I do that, I'm going to introduce a, uh, a story from uh, Miami Beach. It's a real estate story, uh, and I call it the Carlos and Hennessy's podcast. So very exciting stuff today. We're going to get right into it. Let's move. Okay. So we're going to read about the origins of pizza. To do that... I'm going to go into our Google Classroom page. Here we are. And I believe somebody asked, uh, texted me asking me what we are using this for. So, all right, I, okay. I'm going to attach this just for today's reading. Okay, and I'm clarifying, you won't need to complete the questions at the end, just an exercise in class. So I am attaching this PDF file. And you can, you can practice reading this on your own, but we are going to uh, read this together, just the, few, just the first few paragraphs. All right, so uh, just the first uh, two or three paragraphs right here. And this will follow up with um, what we did last week where we looked at regional pizza in Detroit and Chicago and New York. Uh, who would like to be the first uh, to read the first volunteer reader here? Okay, Anila. 
<clears throat> and you know what, if it's easier, I will actually, before I do that, I'll, I'll also send this PDF file to the WhatsApp group because I realize if you're on a smaller screen, uh, this might not be the most user friendly. I'm going to send this to the WhatsApp as well. There we go. Okay, so there it's also in the WhatsApp group. Okay. All right. Okay, nice and big. All right, Anila, you can, I'll highlight, well, actually, I'll circle which part we can start with. Okay, go for it, Anila. <clears throat> the story of modern pizza, as we know, began in Naples, Italy in the late 1800s. Baker Raffles Aposide is usually given credit for baking the first pizza with tomato sauce, cheese, and uh, toppings. According to legend, pizza was popular, popularized when uh, es, espe, esposito, esposito. was... Esposito was asked to make a pizza for Italian King uh, um, Umberto I and Queen Margherita mm -hmm. when the royal pair visited Naples in 1889. Esposito uh, allegedly baked three different pizzas. The Queen's favorite was the one in which Espedito Esposito. Es Mm -hmm. Esposito had designed in honor of Italy's red, white, and green flag. It had basil, mozzarella, cheese, and tomato sauce. Esposito named it Pisa Margherita in the honor, in her honor. Very good, very good. Now, uh, how many? I think it was Anila. You had New York last week, right? Uh, who else was in your group? Yep, Julia. Julia. So Julia, Anila, and I'm not sure who else. This is where that story comes in. Uh, Julia, would you like to read the second paragraph? Yeah. Go for it. Pizza, however, failed to immediately take hold in Italy. As Italian Im immigrants come to the United States, however, pizza comes with them. In 1905, the first United States pizzeria was established in New York City. The pizzeria called Lambors. Lombardis, Lombardis. Mm -hmm. uh, still oper operates uh, today. Soon then, pizzerias in New York uh, City and be beyond uh, operate uh, by word uh, by word war uh, too. Pizza was one of Americans' most popular foods. In the 1950s, uh, the uh, Tonil Totino family or of uh, Minnesota. Minnesota was uh, thought to have pro pro produced the first frozen pizzas. Very good. So this story, even though the, the language is simple enough to follow it easily, it does trace that chronology of how it would come to America and then go from one place to the other to the other. And paragraph three, who would like to read? Any volunteer? You can use the hand raising emoji. Uh, Freitas. In 1958, Frank and Dan Kearney borrowed $16 from $600. their parents. $600. Six, $600. <laughs> $600. $600. Uh, not $1,600. <laughs> $600 from their parents and opening in pizzeria pizzeria in Wichita, Kansas. Beautiful. They call their restaurant Pizza Hut because they didn't have a space for additional letter on their first sign. Pizza Hut became very popular and soon the brothers opening new restaurant in hands. The first pizza franchise was born. Today there are more than 10 
10,000 Pizza Hut restaurants. Similarly, Domino's was established by two brothers who borrowed $900 to purchase a pizzeria called Dominic in Ypsilanti, Michigan. In 1984, Joe Chat Natter, 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 Papayong in Indiana, Indiana or Indiana? Indiana. That's a, that's Indiana. A, yeah, that's another state. Very good. All right, and then I'll read this last part. Today, Americans spend over thirty-three billion dollars each year on pizza. In twenty sixteen, there are over seventy thousand thousand restaurants in America that serve pizza. Um, now, quick uh, note here. What does this phrase mean, according to legend? Does it mean it's absolutely certain and proven? Or does it mean something else? According to legend. Can you ask again, please? What is a whole. Uh, what does this mean? What I underlined here, according to legend. It's a whole history about <laughs> the pizza, but it's not real. It's only history. It's only history. It's not real. You're getting close. What do you mean? It's only history. It's not real. So history is not real. Some histories are real, but the legend, the legend, are not. By the popular people, according to the legend, mean like the the popular people. You're you're pretty close. Hey, um, can can anybody think of something that is is something that people believe that is hard to prove? Uh, the Great legend proof. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna say more. Me. Yeah, yeah. What is it? Yeah. Uh, the legend is a popular story, but can be real or not. Perfect. It's a popular story. So exactly. Uh, good job. Good job. So I think both Gracie and Anila were further clarifying what Israel was trying to say. Israel was, you were looking for the right words. Israel said, it's history, but it's not, it's fake. Or like, well, you're not quite, we need a few uh, more words to describe exactly what that means. It is a popular story. So um, just because something is believed does not mean it is necessarily true. It is very hard to prove that the first pizza was made in Naples, Italy. It just happens to be widely believed. Is Italy the first place to have flour and bread and dough? Certainly not. So it's, is Italy the first place to bake, flatten dough out and bake it and put stuff on top of it? Not mm -hmm. really. It could have happened in a lot of different places. <laughs> it could have, it's such a simple idea, you know, since the origins of, you know, uh, you know, I think the Mesopotamians thousands of years ago, present day, yeah. you know, all these ancient civilizations everywhere, the ancient China, you know, the Indus River Valley, these old societies probably figured out something similar before uh, Naples, Italy in the 1800s. But it's what people believe, true or not true, it is widely believed. And uh, it is widely considered Italian. But as we learned last week, there is different pizza everywhere in the world. And that was a really fun. Uh, it was a really fun class last week where everybody got to share the regional pizzas, different flavors. Everybody can mix and match. But uh, that's the origin story. Uh, true or not. That is what is widely believed. So that's what legend means. Um, this is a little bit of fun. Uh, it's, it's more of a level four, not a level six exercise, but I still like to do it just as a warm up. Um, first question, anybody who didn't read, try to take, uh, try to take this, 
this, this question right here. Why is Rafael Esposito important in the history of pizza? A, B, C, D, or E. Everybody, you can do this. It's a small enough group today. You can, it's about where we have 12 people right now. Um, raise your hand when you think you've got the answer. A, B, C, D, or E. Who was, why is Esposito important? E. Okay, so Gracie says E. Does anybody have a diff? Well, there is no E. It's A. B. B. I say B. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I made a mistake. There is no D. I said E. <laughs> a minute ago. A, B, C, D, or E. That's not a choice. It's only four choices. What so about, Gracie, what about Gracie C? says D. C, teacher. E, okay. Let's take a look. So we can go back. Rafael Esposito. Here we go. So who is Mr. Esposito? Okay, so the baker in the 1800s is given credit and it says right here, according to legend, it was popular when he baked a pizza for the King Umberto and Queen Margarita. So this is long before it came to New York. So what's the right answer? Did he bring pizza to America? I think D teacher. B. He said to have known the king and queen of Italy. Mm, it is. It's quite, let's see. He is credited for baking the first modern pizzas. He helped establish the first pizza franchise. It's definitely not A, and it's definitely not C. But what's the best choice? B. B. Let's take a look. B B. Let's, B. Take, an, let's take, a, take a while and make an argument. So this is part of what you're going to be doing when you get to college. Let's make a rhetorical argument. Who, are, who can argue B and who can argue um, D? I say B. <laughs> why, uh, why do you say that, Gracie? D, the last one. Okay. Tell me why. Uh, I think uh, was popular when Eposito was asked to make pizza for Italian King Umberto and Queen Margarita. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot. Yep. Yeah. That is correct. It goes into Queen Umber uh, King Umberto and Queen Margarita. Yeah. Now it does say the first pizzas with the tomato sauce and cheese. That's implied it's the first modern pizza, but uh it is the correct answer is uh D. Because it goes, it's really he's said to have no, well. Actually, wait, no, I made a mistake. That's not what D says. Let's see. What, is, what does D say? He is said to have known the king and queen of Italy. Did he know them? Was he friends with them? Go again, let's see. Uh, who argued B? Me, Sandra. Sandra, you give me an argument. Why is it B? Because in you know, the first paragraph explain his the credit for baking the first modern pizza. And um, oh wait, there it is. Yeah, you're right. Boom, <laughs> right there. Given credit for baking the first modern pizzas. Yes, it is B. Okay. Even though the language is not that complicated. This is a good exercise, reading comprehension. Okay, number two, what is implied in the first paragraph? What does the word implied mean? If something is implied, is it said directly? Describe. Nope. Well, let's say we're having that you're having dinner at a restaurant. I and uh, you you sit there at the table. And uh, a lot of you work at restaurants, so you know exactly. You know what it's like when you have customers who don't leave, right? 
and then they stay and they order another glass of water and another glass of water. And you need to make some more money. And there's people waiting outside. You need that table. You need to make that tip. So you can't say, hey, get out. That's not a, <laughs> that won't work. So what's a way, if you're a waiter at a restaurant, what's something that you can say, a nice thing to say to let people know it's time to burn that table, get the next group in? I have an idea. Yeah. I went with when the... Um... They said, may, may I give you a ch chance or not? If you know, when you pay, someone asks you if they have to give right. you the chance or yeah, not, yeah. they, you know, exactly, exactly. That, that, right. What do you need? Do you, uh, well, that, that's, that's what the tr cash transaction, we're not there yet. There's the people are still sitting there. They haven't left yet. They haven't told you they're ready to pay. Yes. So before we get there, what if you just kind of say, hi, is there anything else you need? Mm -hmm. What am I when, really saying? When they two yes, to, but no yes. direct present. What, yes. So when 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 you see, when the, the people are still sitting there, they're not ordering any more food. It looks like they're finished. It looks like they've had a good time, and they need that table. The waiter's not going to say, "Get out. We need this table." <laughs> they're say, Hi. Is there anything else I can get you? Is everything okay? Yeah. Right. You've probably, all of you who've worked in restaurants and, you know, food service, you know exactly what that, that moment, but what is implied? What are they really saying? They're not saying, can I get you something else? They're saying what? It's something that they, <clears throat> you want to let someone to know, but no directly. Yeah, yeah. It's what like... is it that you're really saying? Hi, can I get you one more thing? You're really saying... Mm -hmm get out <laughs> but yes go very go politely, it's time to go <laughs> very it's time to go thank you for coming that's what you're really saying you're really saying so glad you came please come again keep it moving that's what you're really you're, you're really can i get you something else really means teacher if you put yeah. the check in the table maybe you exactly can see. <laughs> that's another one that body language it's like can i get you anything else okay here's and you put the check on the table Beautiful, Leonardo. You put the check on the table. So the check on the table implies what? What is implied with the check on the table? Leonardo, tell, tell us. That's perfect. What's implied? <clears throat> Keep going, Leonardo. Don't leave me hanging. You, you brought it up. It is like you need to pay. And exactly. It's telling, it's, when you, it's telling when you, them, time to pay. Keep it moving. We're busy. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. We're busy. Thank you for coming. Move along. That's what it means. So in writing, when you're reading something, very often something will be implied. So implied means not said directly. What is implied in the first paragraph? A modern... Pizza day pizza was likely born in Naples, Italy. B, pizza margarita is modeled after the Italian flag. C, Raphael Esposito is credited with making pizzas for the king and queen of Italy. Esposito's story may or may not be true. Which one is implied but not said directly? Here we go. All right, what is implied but not said directly in the first paragraph? So it's said directly, Esposito is given credit for, uh, Esposito is usually given credit for baking the first pizzas with tomato sauce, cheese, toppings. Got it. Okay. That's implied. I'm sorry, that's said directly, not implied. Okay, what else? According is to Leon, is D. it's implied because you know it you don't know is true or is false. There you go. There you go. There you go. According to legend, that's the reason I pointed out the word legend. That's yes. the implication. This may or may not be true. Mm -hmm. That's what's implied. This, this may or may be exactly. 
That's what's implied. This story may or may not be true. Yes. That's what's implied. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, and then we, uh, I'm not going to give you, I wanted to go over these two because it's an exercise in reading comprehension. Uh, you can try these on your own. This is a little bit too easy for this class, but just for extra fun, you can try these on your own. I'm going to pivot now uh, from these multiple choice questions to a listening exercise. So that was a, that's what I wanted to do with this, just reading comprehension. And now we're going to do some listening comprehension. All right. So On Google Classroom, I, I have given you your very first assignment. Whoops, there we go. So here's Google, uh, Google Classroom. <clears throat> now, I said, after watching the lecture by Dr. Samir Parikh, Draw a pizza identifying all areas of your life which bring you stress. You may use a paper and paper and pencils or any internet tools you like. So I don't care if you draw with your kids, crayon, paper, whatever. I don't care if you get online and you know use internet tools, that's fine. Anything you like, but you just want to be able to explain what areas of your life, make a chart with a in the shape of a pizza, what areas of your life bring you stress. It's good to talk about stress management and it helps you with your writing and your schoolwork as well. So here is Dr. Samir Parikh. And I'm gonna put this link to the video right here in Google Classroom. So you can see me adding the link to the assignment right there. I'm doing this on purpose to show you how to properly add links to uh, things. There you go. All right, and I've added the video. Now let's go back into our slides and watch it. So when you listen to different people speak English, English is like pizza. Do people, it is, is English the same everywhere in the world? Or do people speak their own English everywhere? The answer is people speak their own English everywhere. English people speak in uh, New Zealand mm -hmm. is remarkably different from English that will be spoken in Malaysia or Singapore, uh, which, is be, which will be different from English that is spoken in India, which will be different from English that is spoken in Ireland. It's teacher like the, just the accent would be like different or the there English are, too? There are difference in accents. There are also different spellings of words. We actually have, we spell words differently in the US and the UK. Would you believe that? I'll give you an example. In America, we use this. What word did I just spell? Color. Color. I just spelled color. If I'm in the UK, and uh, if you're, if I'm, if I'm uh, attending a graduate's program in uh, the United Kingdom, and I am writing my thesis. I need to change the settings on my computer for British English because my American brain will spell color C-O-L-O-R. But when I change countries, color is this. So just like pizza is different, culture is different, uh, English, the most widely spoken word, uh, language in the world, is not the same everywhere. Uh, and you could compare this to many languages that are spoken around the world. Is Spanish the same in Chile and the Dominican Republic and uh, Mexico? Totally different. 
totally the different. formal word. Right, there will be formal words, exactly. And everybody, of course, will say that, you know, their way is right and somebody else is wrong, but <laughs> it, language is different. Uh, Arabic, is, if anyone has ever learned a bit of Arabic before, Arabic is vastly different from one place to the other. Um, anyway, so this doctor is from India. Uh, he speaks a little bit fast. So when, if you're not used to hearing his voice, you wanna use your video tools to help you understand what he's saying. If you're in America, you're used to people speaking with an American accent like mine, his accent might be a little uh, jarring. You might say, what, what's going on? So I'm gonna play a little bit and I wanna ask you, he speaks a little too fast. I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand if you understand what he says. Here we go. You talk to anybody and ask them, are you stressed? They'll say yes. It could be a child going to school. It could be a college student. It could be a married or an unmarried person. It could be young or an old. It could be public sector, private sector, any place, any role, any profile. You ask them stress, they'll say yes. Okay. Raise your hand if you could tell me what he said. I see one hand up. Okay. <laughs> Anila, his, his way of speaking English is a little bit close to probably the way you learn to speak English, right? For Anila, this is perfect. It's like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, get yeah it. the Indians and ours, you know, our accent, we understand each other. And, like, yeah. the way and was, when, when Anila's hand went up, I looked at this expression on Freyrtis' face. She's like this. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now what you want to do is use your technology to help you make it a little bit easier. First of all, he's speaking a little bit too fast. So, well, first of all, you want to enable, uh, actually, I should say enable closed captions. Uh, this video doesn't have closed captions, but I, your teacher, can enable the closed captions on Zoom. Watch this. Close, okay, captions, show captions, and you'll see, a, you'll see something on your screen that allows, just to click allow for captions. Yep, okay. You talk to anybody and ask them, are you stressed? They'll say yes. It could be a child going to school, Okay, now everybody sees the captions, right? That helps a little bit. You see the captions on the screen when I'm speaking now, that helps a little bit, but it's still too fast. So what features can we use to slow the video down so you can really understand it? What can we do to slow them down just a little bit? In, in setting teacher, we can do something. You got it. Who knows what to, uh, what I should, does everybody see the wheel? That's the settings wheel. It's the shape of a wheel. Yeah. You can call it the wheel or settings. I'm gonna click right here. Now, which, what should I click? Quality or playback speed? Speed. Speed, there you go. So this is normal speed. Mm -hmm. What should I change it to? Should I change it to this? No, up, up feature, I think, point. Okay. All right, so normal means just as it was recorded. If I do 1.25, that's gonna be faster. If I do yeah. 0.75, that's gonna be slower. So I'm gonna show you double speed. Tell me if it helps. No, teacher. Okay, let's not do that. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> All right. 
Now let's do, let's, we want it slower. So let's do 0.25. Is this helping? Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, so when uh, you're given a recording of anything, and you could do this with the recordings of this class, you might say, hear my voice and say, slow down, I don't get it. You can slow down this class to slow my voice down as well. So just go to 0 0.75. And if that's not slow enough, do 0 0.5. I think 0 0.75 will help. Here we go. Let's try it again. You talk to anybody and ask them, are you stressed? They'll say yes. It could be a child going to school. It could be a college student. It could be a married or an unmarried person. It could be young or an old. It could be public sector, private sector, any place, any role, any profile. You ask them stress, they'll say yes. I don't know about you. I think I heard him okay. Can everybody, if you agree with me, give a thumbs up emoji. Yeah. I know exactly what he's saying now. So wh who could tell me what is Dr. Parikh saying? Let's hear. He from said somebody. about stress teacher. Yeah, he's talking about stress. Let's let's hear from another voice. Um, who have we not heard from today? Let's see. We've heard from Israel. Uh, Bibiana, are you? How are you doing today, Bibiana? I'm great, teacher. Thank you. Good. How are you? Um, great, great. What do you think he's talking about when he says you talk to anybody? They say they're stressed. It could be young, old, married, unmarried. What's he talking about? Everybody. Everybody. Everybody has stress. That's it. You got it. As put simply, everyone has stress. No matter who In you are places. on this earth, you could be rich or poor. You could be married, single. Every human being has stress. It could be public sector, private sector, any place, any role, any profile. You ask them stress, they'll say yes. So what's the solution? I think the solution is to first accept the fact that stress is a normal part of everyday life. And to fight it, you have to accept it. Once you accept it, take it head on. So what's he saying there? Accept it and take it head on when he points to the camera. What does he mean by that? You have to accept that everyone has stress. If you accept that, you can... Survey this like you got it, Gracie. Yeah, and realize. Wait a minute, I'm feeling stressed. And realize once you realize that every human being on in on this planet also has stress, you just face it. You can't hide from it. You got to face it. Yes. And here comes the uh, analogy of the pizza. I'm gonna actually go back to normal speed. Then I'll go to back to 0.75 in a minute. Here comes the pizza analogy. Remember, who remembers what is an analogy? Analogy, A-N-A-L-O-G-Y. It's to compare it's two different things. There you go. So an analogy is a comparison of two things. So his analogy, the reason I'm showing this video is, he says that life equals pizza. Oh, wow. Sounds funny. <laughs> But when he explains it, it actually makes a lot of sense. Here we go. How do you take it head on? By understanding that life has various parameters. I've always compared life to a pizza. So imagine if you are to cook a pizza and you want various toppings on them, then you might put various toppings on your slices, but you'll still cook the whole pizza at one go. It's not that you'll give more importance to one slice, less to another, the pizza goes for a toss. So now, if your life is a pizza, then you also have these subparts. Your slices are your family, your friends, your children, your work, your physical health, your mental well-being, your fun, your recreation, your creative needs. All of this put together makes your pizza. If you give all of it adequate time, adequate energy, balance it well, and then cook it at one go, that's how you fight stress. So from now on, Treat life like a pizza and cook it to your taste. So he says, I'll slow it down here. I've always compared life to a pizza. 
in life to a pizza. So imagine if you are to cook a pizza and you want various toppings on them, then you might put various toppings on your slices, but you'll still cook the whole pizza at one go. It's not that you'll give more importance to one slice, less to another, the pizza goes for a toss. So now, if your life is a pizza, then you also have these subparts. Your slices are your family, your friends, your children, your work, your physical health, your mental well-being, your fun, your recreation, your creative needs. All of this put together makes your pizza. If who can give tell me what he, what does he mean by this analogy? Yeah, let's hear it in somebody in your own words, somebody who hasn't had a chance to share today. Anthony, what do you think he means? I think uh, you have to put all your goals in. Um, you have to uh, to follow. Uh, um, I go up for to get uh, something like that, teacher. Like uh, the pizza, the like your goals. Goals, okay. <clears throat> um, you have to what's, put what's one of your goals? What's one of your goals? Learn English. Okay, so English is one goal. Can you spend every single moment of your day thinking about learning English? Or do you have other things to do? Let's say maybe you have a job, job number one. Yeah. Maybe you have another family. job, job number family. two. Friends. Maybe you have a family. Maybe you have hobbies, desires, passions. <clears throat> Maybe you have, I don't know. Basically, this is the analogy. So you, I know you are also in school. Remember, everybody here is a student. <laughs> so <clears throat> you are in school. So you want to learn more English, you are in school. You are a student, you have to follow your assignments every week. You have to get on Zoom with George, get to JP the next day to meet with Ashley. That's a lot to think about. You got your job, you got your kids, you got all this stuff going on, and then whatever else is happening in your life. Um, who else can summarize this, in their own words, this analogy, life, is a pizza. Compare your life to a pizza. Doris, you want to give a shot? Or Letitia? He said that uh, all the life pizza uh, are important in, in your life. And he mentioned uh, recreation, family, uh, world, and he said, he said all the life pizza are important for uh, whole or Whole pizza. Exactly. Whole, whole pizza. Exactly. Exactly. That's why the analogy actually works quite well. Because when you bake a, if you bake a pizza, you can't bake this slice more than this slice. You can't say, you know, we all like to say, you know, let's, uh, I'm going to give more time to my schoolwork. Oh, no, I'm going to put, I need to make more money. I'm going to give more time to my job and forget about my family this week. Is that even possible? It's, it's, it's impossible. If your life is like a pizza, you realize I can't, you cannot ignore one slice to only focus on another slice. The whole thing is baking, whether you know it or not. <laughs> it's all baking. So you have to pay attention to every single slice and recognize that one slice is not going away. It's a whole pizza together. So that's, a, that's why it works as a tool for stress management, to rethink your life as a whole pizza. What are the different slices of life that need attention? Which toppings, which, which slices do you need to put more toppings on? So that's the analogy <clears throat> that we're working with. Uh, I'm gonna put everyone in breakout rooms right now. 
And what I would like you to do is share uh, what aspects of your life bring you stress. What are your slices on your pizza that you must pay attention to? So we've got a few more people that have just arrived. So I'm gonna make three breakout rooms and I'm asking everyone to use this analogy, compare your life to a pizza, talk about which slices you have to pay attention to. What brings you stress? What do you need to manage? Does everybody understand what I mean with this analogy? Yes. Okay. If you don't understand, say <laughs> absolutely nothing. <laughs> Perfect. Everybody understands. All right. Okay. Let's go into breakout rooms. Here we go. Let's make three breakout rooms. You can join your breakout room right now. Gracie, do you have your heat up turn turn heat turned way up in your house? I'm wearing a sweater. I'm like, she's got to have a, it's like 65 degrees in here, but it's cold outside. I'm looking at Gracie. I'm like, you got to have that thing turned up to like 85. You're giving National Grid a lot of money today. <laughs> that's okay. Living in summer, sorry. You, no, it's okay. You got to be, you got to, it's, that's, that's it. That's your slice. That's it. That's so much <laughs> you gotta better. Be you got to study in comfort. Yeah, yeah. All right. So everybody, you can join your breakout room right now. Thank you. When I am working. When I'm working. And it's not important. It's not important. Yes. And call yes. you for <laughs> some reason. I hate that. But you don't have to yeah, answer if no. it's not an emergency. You don't have to answer. You don't have to get stressed before that. You don't have to answer if you can't. It's, it's, not, it's not a big deal. No, yeah, I know. But it, when I answer this uh, call, I think maybe it's important. And when people say, no, no it's maybe, only maybe, maybe <laughs> this is not your son. It's not your mother. You are not a doctor. You are not a lawyer. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I know. And, and your co-worker, what I what I do with my, co, my the people who work with, and I see I am extremely perfectionist. But sometimes you see that someone is everything is okay, nothing happened, and I say okay, this is my part, the me separate. I have to do this, but if you don't do your part, something will be bad. But nothing happened. I did what I have. You know it's you don't have to take responsibility for the group. It's you because you don't have, you can control everyone. I know, but depends. O sea, yeah, uh, this is not stuff all the time. It's for, yes. yeah. You know, and... I, I'm trying to avoid the stress because I don't like stress. Me too, I have my but... son and my mother, they are enough. <laughs> they they require a lot of that from me and it's enough. It's okay. Yeah, but no worries. Yeah. You think the same or is it just me? No, I think the attitude that you put influence a lot. How you see the life, you know, and everything. I, yeah. I'm agree. Has anybody uh, sh started sharing their drawings yet? I already have about... mine. Yeah. Let's see it. Let's see it. Everybody can turn your cameras on. Start to share. Right. I only did four slides. Okay. All right. Tell us a little bit about this, uh, Claudie. Well, one slice is about my child because she wake up every day too early, like 6 a.m. And I'm not a morning person. Mm -hmm. And the next one is home mm -hmm. because I I am at home most of the time so I think it's a stressful too sometimes sometimes it's fun but sometimes it's a stressful and yeah. I'm not working at the moment so 
sometimes it can be stressful too. And about the future, because we never know what's going to happen. Okay. That's my pizza. Uh, Israel, Leonardo. Oh, Shamara. Yeah, this is looking good. Shamara, tell us all about this. Oh, well, you're muted. Yeah. Oh, I still can't hear you for some reason. No, I'm not sure why. Play with the uh, the sound. We, we lost Leonardo. I'll bring him back here. And we are in. Um... Here it comes. Oh, we lost you, Leonardo. Welcome back. <laughs> okay, so I see I see a lot is going on with Shamara's pizza, but I for some reason her microphone's not working well. Uh, Israel, what you got? Oh, you're muted, my friend. So hi, how are you? <laughs> I have four slices. I have. One piece for work, one piece for food, one piece for family, and one piece for stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why does food bring you stress? Yeah, because I don't know. I am I'm boring. Wrong. I'm bored with everything, so I don't know how to eat. I don't know what kind of food eat every day. So sometimes I'm stressed because I have stress because I don't know. Okay. Who have food, eat, and every day because I'm bored with everything. I like kids' food, like pizza, burger, something like that. But <laughs> you know, I'm I'm sick of everything now, so I'm, I'm stressed because every day I'm right. thinking about what kind of food eat today, tomorrow. I don't know. I'm gonna show you some recipes. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, recipes, recipes, recipes. Okay, all right. Uh, this is a food blog from the Greater Boston Food Bank. Uh, take a look at this. It's different recipes of all the different kinds of things. Healthy, portable, all that good stuff. There you go. Take a look and uh, <laughs> <laughs> just follow the website you they'll, they'll send you a greater boston food bank will send you a box of stuff and you can just get to cooking <laughs> right away <laughs> and you won't be bored um hey uh, leonardo how about you what you working on oh very nice beautiful i can't uh okay i see it work goals oh you're also muted you're, uh, you're muted as well. This is a very quiet group. <laughs> no, I'm just so sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, I just make uh, one piece, mm -hmm. like one piece, because it's my control. Mm -hmm. the, the attitude is the flour, the mm -hmm. tomato is a work, mm -hmm. the cheese goals, English and it's education, mm -hmm. pineapple is the travels, and the pepperoni is the bills. I know everything is together because it's my life, mm -hmm. um, but the attitude is that make I be happy or angry, angry mm -hmm. about the things. Okay. I don't want to share my my pics. It's just for me. Okay. <laughs> Good work, everybody. I'm gonna go check out the other. Keep talking. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go see the other breakout room. Here we go. Good work, everyone. Wow, this is looking good. I try, teacher. <laughs> Whose screen are we looking at right here? Uh, I found in the in down inside the inside the inside this chat. Oh, oh, you're all doing one together. I see. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, this looks like a lot of fun. Good stuff. 
So I'm going to bring everybody back real quick and sh and do a a um, a uh, little tutorial for Google Classroom. Here we go. Okay, okay. this is fantastic. Okay. Okay, everybody. Good work, good work. All right, excellent. <clears throat> so good work, everybody, today in these breakout rooms. I saw a lot of conversation, a lot of good participation. I'm going to finish up class today with a Google Classroom tutorial. And what that means is whether or not you are familiar with Google Classroom, I'm going to show you how to do it. So last week, I only 
put information in the Google Classroom stream. That's this. Now I have given two assignments and that's under classwork. So uh, the stream is public. It's a conversation for everybody in class and classwork that is individual. So what to do, what to do. When you go into your classwork, you wanna see you, your assignments. And I see here we have two assignments. Now, it's always very important to look at the dates. So what we started working on here, stress pizza. What is the due date for this assignment? January 19th. January 19th, okay. So this is important with stress management. Do you absolutely have to finish this right now? I need yeah. to put the class, the homework before that day, teacher. Well, I'm gonna- That is the last day. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna, I'm going to ask the question again. Do you have to finish this right now? Today, January 17th, must it be turned in right now? No. No, Correct. right now. Correct. Right now. So yes, this is what I mean by going over uh, the assignments. When you, when you have the Google Classroom app and notifications on your phone, you'll, you'll get a notification about an assignment, but very often it'll be a week ahead of time or two weeks ahead of time. Always read the due date. So if you're busy, you have life, work, you know, all this stuff going on, don't panic. You're never going to be given an assignment that's due right away, like today. I'm always going to post it and then you have a due date a little bit ahead of a time. So this is due in 48 hours. So next, the beginning of next class, I'd like to have everyone turn this in and share. So that's the idea. All right, and that's, a, we're starting off with a simple assignment just to make sure everyone uh, can learn the mechanics of Google Classroom. So you have, for the assignment, I give directions. I made my own video for uh, a demonstration. There's Dr. Sam there's Dr. Parikh. And when you are finished drawing your pizza, if it's a, you want to attach it. Does everybody know how to attach a file? So I'm going to assume everybody knows how to attach a file. Uh, Israel, uh, would you turn your camera on, please, and give everyone a demonstration? So Israel, show everybody what you drew. Just hold it up. Uh, hold up your, your pizza that you drew. OK, so everybody's got, Israel's got his pizza. Very simple. Now, he might add a few more details between now and Thursday. But when, now, Israel, take your phone and hold it up next to your paper. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanna do this so everybody understands what to do. Okay, perfect. Now, Israel, when you are finished and you've added all the details that you want, what are you gonna to do to attach that to this Google Classroom? Oh, you're uh, muted, but I know what you're saying. Take the picture. <laughs> Yeah, you have to take a picture and put in the Google Classroom. We have to. Right. So, yes, you'll take a picture and attach it to the classwork. Now, make sure, make sure you don't attach it. Don't attach it here. Don't attach it there. Attach it just to your assignment page. So, you know what I mean? I'm actually going to add myself as a student with a different Google, uh, with a different Gmail. So for a tutorial, I'm gonna add myself. Here we go. I'm gonna add myself and 
the the good thing when you put uh, uh, homework, you can you can make exactly when you and the Google Classroom is appear like your work and you have to assign it and you can put ad attachment and everything is easy. Yes, exactly, exactly. So I just added myself as a student right here. So here we go. I've sent, uh, I'm gonna leave as a teacher and come in as a student just for a demonstration. So here we go. All right, so I only use, I opened up a separate uh, Gmail just to do this. So, whoops. Here it is. There we are. So I'm joining the class. Hang on one second. Oh, I see. There it is. I'm joining as a student. So I'm going through the entire process just to show everybody what to do. There it is, there's my invite, joining the class now. All right, so now I have joined the class and this is what my pay, your page looks like. So I've joined as a student with a separate Gmail just to show you what to do. So when I look here, I see two new assignments. Okay, this one is due January 19th. This one is due January 26th. So when I see this, do I call teacher George and say, George, what is this? What do I do? What do you want me to do? Did I do that? Absolutely not. The instructions are there and it's not due till next week. Now this one, that's due in two days. So I wanna follow the instructions, see what I'm supposed to do. And then when I attach the file, what do I do? Uh, Israel, you can walk me through this. You can do this on your phone as well. What should I press? What should I press here? Mark is done or add or create? Add or create. Correct. So I add and then I go to file and then I, that's when I would attach the picture. Exactly what he was showing, what I asked uh, Israel to do with the phone and, and the paper. Does everybody understand? Yes, yes no? teacher. Okay. So Thursday, I want to see everybody. I want to see all these assignments attached and we can share and talk about what aspects of our life bring us stress. So everyone should be able to finish this by Thursday and it's exactly 12 o'clock. We are done. Okay. Any questions? No questions. Thank you all. Thank you all, everybody. Good class. And I will see you Thursday. Bye-bye. Thank you, teacher. Bye. 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 Bye.